Hi guys, my name is Mr. Laird. I know a lot of you guys know me already from taking classical piano and guitar before. This is an introductory video for classical piano and guitar. I'm sorry that I can't be at our first class meeting on, uh, of the term. I'm away at a conference this weekend and um, have to be there for various things that I'm doing. So I wanted to take a moment today through video and just outline the course. If you've taken this course before, you really know most of this stuff, uh, all of this stuff, really. But what I do the first day is really outline how the class works for anybody that's new in the class. So if you're an experienced member of the class and want to use this time to uh, practice and work on your instrument, you are perfectly welcome to do that. Um, you could also take this time to do the first theory of the term and that would get you one step ahead on your theories. If you're new to the class, I want you to uh, watch the video. This will walk you through our, our really how the class works and, and get you up and ready so that you don't have to take time with me um, when you come to class on the next class meeting. Uh, so again, sorry I have to do this through video, but it's better than nothing today and it'll get you all the information you would have if I were in the class itself. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to open up Moodle. Uh, I have populated the Moodle course with everybody that's enrolled in the class as of uh, today, which is a couple of days before the class starts. So you should be able to open up your Moodle page and under my courses find Piano and Guitar. Um, if you're not already enrolled in Piano and Guitar, you want to go ahead and self-enroll. There's no key. You can just go find it in the Moodle courses and hit enroll and you ought to be good to go. So if you haven't done that yet, uh, go ahead and hit pause on the video and get your Moodle class opened. Now, I'm going to assume that you've got Moodle opened. Close to the top of the page, you'll see our course expectations document. Um, and I'd like you to go ahead and open the course expectations document. We'll give you a minute to do that. Go ahead and hit pause if you need to. Okay, and now that course expectations is open, I'm going to begin by telling you about the class going right down through the course expectations. And then from there, we're going to go back to that Moodle page and I'll walk you through that as well. In addition to the Moodle page, there is a new web page that's just been designed that really has all of the information that Moodle has in a little bit of a user-friendly way. Uh, to access it and I will provide that link to you through an email as well and that's simply called uh, Scott Laird class pages and that will get you the same information. But let's walk through this course syllabus. Um, first of all, uh, uh, I always begin this class by saying this, if you are a beginning musician, you've never taken piano or guitar before and you simply want to learn how to play that instrument, you're in the right class. Um, if you're an advanced piano or guitar player, you've been playing for 10 or 12 years and you play in competitions and have private lessons and um, are quite advanced at your instrument, you too are in the right class. And then if you've taken a couple of years of music lessons and know a little bit or a lot about music but maybe want to bring your skills back up or just maintain your skills or, or um, get back to it, you're in the right class as well. This class is for every uh, background and experience level and every ability level so you're in the right class if you want to work on piano or guitar as a skill. The first page of the course uh, uh, expectations really it just little, talks a little bit about our philosophy. I'd encourage you to read it. It's more of a broad philosophical statement. It also has really some very um, specific information about this class. The second paragraph um, this course is a comprehensive study of instrumental music through the idioms of piano and guitar. It's self-paced and it provides you the opportunity to learn music literature and performance practice of guitar or piano. You'll learn techniques, note reading, chords, harmony, rhythm and pitch. Uh, you have to choose an instrument, guitar or piano, in any given trimester. Now some kids will take this course two times, three times, up to six times. And you don't have to play guitar or exclusively all six times. You might take guitar this trimester and piano next trimester if you choose to do that. Or you might play guitar all six trimesters. Or you might just take it one trimester and be done. So, that, so you can do any of those combinations. Um, you choose guitar or piano as your primary instrument. It includes written assignments, music theory assignments. It includes assigned songs to learn and perform for me and it has uh, in-class performances, which we call recitals, and then it has a, an exam at the end of the term, too. 
Um, there's no prerequisites for the course and everybody is eligible and it's what we call repeatable for credit. Now there's no textbook for this class. All of the guitar songs for beginning guitars are found on Moodle. Um, all of the piano songs are found in a book called the Bastion Older Beginner Piano Method. If you're interested in beginning piano, you can go down to the book room and get one of those um, Older Beginner Piano Method books and you'll be ready to go for our next class meeting. And if you're a more advanced player, you're welcome to use your own repertoire that you bring from home, books that you have or whatever. Or you can go to our book room and peruse through our piano or guitar literature and see if you can find something in there that really works for you. If you're a more advanced guitar player and want to learn classical uh, repertoire, we have lots of uh, classical guitar books downstairs. And um, same with piano. We have lots of classical piano books as well. Okay. Um, for guitar players that want to do classical guitar and have some background in note reading, we use the Christopher Parkening guitar method, and I recommend you get that book for our next class meeting. So you'll want to check that out. It'd be great if you came to our next class meeting uh, with the books that you need, piano players, if you have those, those books, that'd be great. Beginning guitar players, I'll provide that music for you, and you can actually scroll through Moodle and find that music as well. Um, maybe even print out the first couple of songs, or I have them for you here as well. Okay. Uh, let's go on to the second page. On the second page, you'll see that we have cor our course content uh, includes learning proper playing position and techniques, level specific literature, um, and everybody learns songs. I, I really equate um, music to um, learning a language and fluency of language, and I believe you get better by learning songs, and that's what we do. We learn uh, a new song all the time. Uh, level specific music theory that is the written work that we do for most people if you're do if you're new to the class you will take what we call the linear music theory if you are a second trimester student in this class you will do vertical music theory third trimester is what we call vertical two fourth trimester we call advanced and then fifth trimester is theory skills and I'm thinking of adding a sixth trimester as well of more analysis. So we'll see if we can get that added in this trimester as well. Uh, it includes in-class performances. Those are recitals. We do one at midterm and one at the end of the term. Practice techniques. We'll deal with practice techniques each day and talk about how to get good at an instrument and a, and a skill. And then some ear training as well. Our numerical averages for letter grades are 98 and above is an A+. Um, and then from there we use a straight 90, 80, 70, 60 grading scale uh, like the entire humanities department so you can uh, figure that. I always like to say that the vast majority of students who take this class earn A's. Um, if you're taking this class I figure you want to do the work, you're here and so uh, we try to make it so that it's very possible to earn an A and um, I, I'm sure if you jump right in and dig in you'll do just fine. The grading breakdown looks like this. Songs, learning songs each week is 35% of your grade. We uh, typically require 15 songs per trimester, although I'm going to tell you that I'm pretty sure we'll make it 12 songs per trimester. Just the way the trimesters have worked with breaks, Christmas break, and some of the things during the second trimester, I usually lighten that load. So if you think about it, 12 songs per trimester is about one song per week. So if you get that in mind, you'll be in good shape. Um, we have one test at the end. It's a cumulative exam on the music theory that you've been studying all term. Our recitals, we have two recitals. Each one is worth 10% for a total of 20%. Your class participation grade is coming in and doing your work each day. This class is largely individualized and so there is a 20% or 10% uh, class participation grade for just coming in and getting your work done. And then I do ask you to keep a notebook in this class and that is 5% of your grade. Between now and the next class meeting, I would like you to get a notebook. I want you to get one of these little paper folders. I don't want you to use a binder. I like these thin folders. You can keep them in your backpack or whatever, and they're always with you. Um, I will hand out a packet of documents that you will need for the class um, beginning uh, on the next class period. Um, it'll have this small packet of pages that go in the three hole center area that will be connected to the book and I really like to get you to get these folders that have the three hole punch center area and the flaps on the left and the right and that will be just the perfect folder to use for this class. 
You're going to keep your music theory assignments in one of the folders. Uh, you'll keep any of your songs that you have in the other side of the folder. And you'll keep um, this packet of documents that I will give you in the center part where the three hole punch is. So please go ahead and get that for our next class period. It's really important that you get that right away. Okay? Uh, so there's a, a notebook grade that is 5% of your grade. Okay? Um, continuing through um, the, uh, um, the course documents, I will mention that I will give written grade reports right before midterm and again right before the end of the term so that you know exactly what your grades are. I, I keep grades in something called gradebook, but you'll also know what your grades are looking like based on the number of song credits that you have and um, that type of thing. Um, in this class, I believe strongly in using uh, YouTube and the internet as a big part of what we do. I have placed all of my lessons for beginning guitar and beginning piano instruction on YouTube, just like I have this video um, uh, set up, so that you can um, always access my lessons and the content that I want to deliver for you. So in any given day, if, in fact today, if you wanted to, you could click on the beginning guitar assignment, or the, excuse me, the, the uh, introduction to guitar or the introduction to piano, and really begin your work on guitar or piano today, already, even though I'm not in class. And anytime um, you're ready to move on to the next song in the curriculum, you can just click on the next thing. If you're an advanced player, I strongly encourage you to use YouTube to see performances of the works that you are working on uh, in your book. Virtually all music that we are learning in this class is available on YouTube and it's available with very good performances by professionals and sometimes very bad performances by amateurs. And so uh, one thing to do is be very discerning about what you find on YouTube, but use it as a resource. It's incredible. Also, all of my music theory lectures and explanations are on YouTube. So you can find them all through Moodle or through my class page. They're all right there and you can um, access my content delivery at any time, 24 seven, and get your work done whether you're here in class physically or not. It's a great thing about this class is that when you come to class, it's fairly individualized. I encourage you to bring your computer to class every day. You can sit at a piano or at your guitar, access my lessons. Maybe today you don't feel like playing guitar, you want to do your music theory, that's perfectly fine with me. As long as you're working on stuff for this class during class, I'm happy to have you doing that. And you can always access my music theory lectures or my uh, information on the songs that I give you that you're learning. So uh, very much committed to using YouTube and web resources as a resource in here. We sometimes call that a blended curriculum. The whole idea of that is that you can always get my information. Well, what do I do during class? Well, I'll walk from person to person to person and I'll hear what you have prepared at that point for me and I'll give you a credit or a grade for it. So during a class period, I might hear 8, 10, 12 different people hear you play a song from me, give you credit, and mentor you. Maybe give you some ideas of how you can make it better. Uh, maybe it won't pass off and I'll say, well, this is wrong and you can make it better by doing this and then I'll give you some time to do it and then I'll come back and hear you again. So that's really the way it works. All built on maximum efficiency of time. We want you to use your time very, very, very wisely in here. Okay? Now, uh, a couple of things to say about that. When you get something uh, evaluated, when I come to hear you play, um, in music we're different than some places, in some classes. Like if you take a quiz in math and you miss 3 out of 10, you're stuck with a 70% grade. In music we don't work that way. If something isn't quite ready or not quite ready to move on yet, I'll give you the information that you need to move on, have you perfect it, have you master it, and check it off at that point. So you'll never get like a, a low grade on a song, on passing a song off. Uh, you might not pass it off and I'll give you what you need to pass it off and then you'll move on when it's, when it's ready. So um, the goal for each song is mastery and, and if you don't achieve it in the first pass when you play it for me, no big deal, you'll do it the next time, okay? Um, so that's what we're doing with songs. Now interestingly on our music theory, our written work, um, I do the same thing. Let's say you turn in a music theory assignment uh, and um, you get uh, 20 out of 30 on the assignment. Not a very good grade. 
The beauty of this class is if you get 20 out of 30, you can correct your mistakes, turn them back into me for 100% credit. So in other words, I'm looking for you to master the material. I'm not really worried if you have to do it twice to get there. Um, because each music theory lesson builds on the previous one. So if you don't understand lesson two, you're probably going to have trouble with three. And if you don't understand three, you're going to have trouble with four. So we want you to get these lessons mastered before you move on. Um, another couple of things about music theory. Um, we'll have a music theory um, assignment each week. They're assigned on Monday and they're due on Thursday. Okay, we have three class periods a week. so. Monday, Tuesday, and then due on Thursday. If Thursday rolls around and you've had an incredibly busy week in your other classes and you cannot turn it in on Thursday, all you have to do is say, hey, Mr. Laird, can I turn my theory in on Monday? And I will say, sure, no problem, okay? So that Thursday deadline is a loose deadline each week. If, if, uh, if you need to turn it in on Monday, that's great. If you come in on Monday and you say, hey, Mr. Laird, I didn't get my theory done. Can I turn it in tomorrow? I will also say, sure, no problem. Turn it in tomorrow. You want to make sure you stay on top of the theories, though. Don't get behind on your theories. If you get severely behind, then it really becomes a problem. So what I always say is, don't abuse my generosity on how you turn in your music theories. Turn them in. Get them in once a week. If you have to need a little extension on one, no problem. Don't make it a habit. Try to get them in one a week. On average, the music theories should take you between 20 minutes and 40 minutes most weeks. Maybe there's one or two that might take a little longer, but they should not take a whole lot of time. So it's a little bit of, little bit of work. Some people do them outside of class, others do them in class. I recommend you do the theories outside of class and focus on your performance skills in the class. Okay? You can always correct music theories for 100%. Okay? We have recitals twice a term. The grading for the recitals is uh, your grade graded on your participation in recitals, your stage presence, how you present yourself in the recital, and, and certainly your accuracy. So you need to make good song choices when you're choosing what you play for recitals. Choose songs that you can play very well, even under a pressure situation when you're playing for your peers. Recitals are lots of fun. I know you'll enjoy doing them. It's really a place where we can share what we've learned in the class with each other. I mentioned already the folder. You understand what to do for that. I would really love it if everyone had a folder on your next class meeting. Um, I mentioned, again, on this next thing, I talk about late work. I mentioned my policy on late work. We really don't penalize you for being a little bit late with theory work. But I do reserve the right, if you hold all of your theories till right before midterm or right before the end of the term, and you turn everything in at once, I reserve the right to penalize you uh, the, the humanities policy on penalizing for late work because it really puts pressure on um, both you for not having done all the back work and you don't have the opportunity to correct your mistakes from one theory to the next and it also puts pressure on me to grade them right away and so I, I really prefer if you bring them in each week in the schedule that we have. There's 10 theories, one a week, you can do that. Okay, let's go to the next page. Just a note on care of instruments. If you ever notice that one of the instruments you're playing is um, in need of repair, please let me know. Uh, or maybe you'll damage one of the instruments. Please let me know. Don't just walk away from it. Um, you're the eyes and ears of, of our instruments, and I don't have my hands on them every day. You do. And if you notice that something needs some, some work, don't hesitate to tell me that it needs some work, and we'll be in good shape. Following that, you see the outline of how, what we do on our music theories, and um, you can review that certainly. Okay? Now, I'd like you to go back to the Moodle page, and I'd like you to maybe um, pull this video screen up into the corner, perhaps, and um, uh, take a look at Moodle. And I just want you to see how I have the, the page outlined. You will notice that at the top, I have uh, a, uh, a whole bunch of course documents. Those documents will be given to you in a stapled packet with a three-hole punch uh, uh, punched out of the side. Those will go in the center of your um, uh, folder when you get it. Um, I'll provide that for you. You don't have to print those out, but those are the course documents that we use. Um, the first document in that is the song credit sheet, and that really is just the the, uh, the place where I will write down your song credits as you get them. You'll notice here, if I hold this up, that um, there's a place for us to write the name of the song, and I sign it, and that essentially means that song is checked off, and we go right down through, and then we can 
put as many songs as you get checked off. That will be right in the front of that packet. And then you can flip through the rest of that packet. Um, it has the guitar assignments, the songs that the guitars are assigned in order, the, um, and that's beginning and intermediate. It has the piano assignments in order, and then it goes into a, lots of the music theory worksheets that you'll use. And those are all, or excuse me, they're not worksheets, they're um, uh, sort of like tools that you'll use. Things like a diagram of a piano keyboard, and a diagram of a musical staff, and a diagram of the sharps and flats on the staff. Um, another diagram of the keyboard, and then what we call the circle of fifths, which you'll use as you come in here. And then it has a printed out copy of your course expectations as well. That will be in your folder every day, so you just have that and you're ready to go on it. After those course documents, you'll see that we have the guitar assignments. Now, each of those guitar assignments has a video where I explain the assignment and then um, a PDF where you can print out that particular song. All of the guitar songs are available in the file cabinet in room 177, um, in the top drawer of the file cabinet, and you can go in there and pull that guitar music out. Some people like to take all of it on the very first day and just get all of their guitar assignments for the whole trimester. Others like to get the first two or three and then start adding to it afterwards, but you're always welcome to go into that file cabinet and get those guitar assignments. Or you can print them out on your own. If you happen to be home for the weekend and want to uh, do the next guitar song, Print it out, you're good to go, watch the video, and take off with that. So, very easy to do. After all the guitar assignments, we have all the piano assignments. Um, and now those all are simply videos or, or audio that relate to the Bastion Older Beginner Piano Method. And I want to tell you that there are also good videos on YouTube by other people other than me where they explain and show those songs as well. You're welcome to use my videos. I recommend you use my videos, but you can find other explanations as well if, you, if mine aren't working for you. It's all fine. There's lots out there. Um, after the beginning piano assignments, um, you will then uh, see um, some music theory resources, uh, some good websites that, that um, do some music theory stuff that you can use, and I'd recommend you check some of that out, and then you'll see my weekly music theory assignments. Now, on this first day, if you would like to print out the worksheet for the first music theory, um, if you're new to the class, you're in linear music theory. If you're a veteran of the class, you know if you're vertical, vertical to advanced or theory skills, and you can jump into that and get started with your music theory and we'll be good to go um, with that. When you come in on Thursday, it would be uh, awesome if you had your uh, first music theory completed and had all the books that you needed to get started on your instrument. And um, we should be good to go there as well. I also encourage beginning piano and guitar players to watch the introduction to piano or the introduction to guitar so you begin to get a feel for what it is to play one of those instruments. If you're starting piano, you can go to one of the practice rooms uh, or, um, or uh, any other piano that's available. If you're one of the guitar players, my, our guitars are locked up today, but you might be able to borrow a guitar from somebody just for this one particular class period. By the way, I have guitars for everybody who wants to learn guitar, and I have lots of pianos down here, so we should be in good shape for class. You don't have to bring your own guitar to class, but you're welcome to bring your own guitar to class. I should say this, if you have an electric guitar, I'd prefer that you use an acoustic guitar in class that I provide. If you have an acoustic guitar, you can use your own guitar for sure. And also, if you need a place to store your guitar, I've got a, I've got a place that we can let you store guitars as well. So, that should walk you through the beginning of this. Um, we will meet in room 140 in the ETC, the large music room. And uh, when we come into class, we'll always, every day, come into class. Um, and uh, I'll take role to start class and talk a little bit about what we're going to do that particular day. And then after about that, it takes maybe two or three minutes, I'll greet you and we'll, we'll say hello for the morning. And then I'll usually say, okay, let's go to work. And everybody will spread out through the music area, that's the carpeted area in the music department, and um, go to work on their individual instruments. We have uh, about eight pianos here in the large room where I'm sitting right now, electric pianos that we can adjust the volume. We've got a couple of practice rooms that all of you know about. We've got a couple of back practice rooms that have pianos in them. And, and you can spread out to any of those pianos. And um, I've got about 15 guitars. You can grab a guitar and spread out through the area and get set up and you'll be ready to go and begin working on your instrument. When you come in in our next class period, we'll get to know each other a little bit. We'll 
um, uh, meet and greet, and then we'll um, go to go ahead and go to work on instruments. And hopefully, by the end of the second class period, everybody will be ready to get started on their instrument. I hope that this has been comprehensive and that you're excited about starting. I'm, st I'm excited to meet you. Um, again, sorry I'm not in class today, and I appreciate your watching this video to get up and running. And we will see you very soon at our next class meeting and, and get everything started. And again, my expectations are that you would um, go ahead and print out the first theory assignment, watch the first theory video, and go ahead and do that assignment. And if you could turn that in on our next class meeting when we meet, that would be fantastic. Um, have a great day, and we'll see you in our next class.